Chairman's turn. I'm sorry, sir. I forgot <laughs> You got to get used to that. Okay. Now we got quite a few going here. Now what age is this, Sally? Eight and under. Eight and under. Okay. Going to go on to Sally. Here's that pancake. Y'all want to come? Joshua Horner. Joshua 24, 15. Murder, you can't yell. <laughs> no. Joshua 24, 15, please. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Where the gods which your fathers served, they were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But it's for me and my house we will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you please some prayer, please. <coughs> Bless her heart. 
Got 10 kids. Daddy was so mean to her. She couldn't leave. She couldn't support 10 kids. No way. But she put up with it. Thank the Lord he did get saved later on in life. Yeah. Lifetime, no matter what, whatever problem we may face, we'll face it together. I tell these folks when I'm married, it's not a 50 50 no more, it's 100 100. Amen. Amen. If you and your family are not attending church or serving God, you'll have even more problems. Strong marriages take the fallen words and carve them in the stone. I'm committed to you, no matter what. Then they take the word divorce out of their vocabulary. Mm. Parents are two ways you can describe the sense of commitment to a child. By telling them that they are a blessing, not a burden. I have children in here this morning. In this generation, we've been a lot of our young people, this part, have been labeled the unwanted generation. They wonder why kids are like they are today. Thank the Lord your parents love your kids and grandkids here. Today's TV sends a message that children are an unwanted expense, Brother Gordon. Unwanted <coughs> expense, and it interferes with their careers. There are no mistakes, no accidents or surprises with God. Abortionists claim there is clear difference between the unborn child, or they say the blob. There's no difference. Amen. That blob is a human being. Amen. These women holler, Mr. Barry, if they're right, get to give these babies up to be sold for body parts. Why didn't they think of that before they had sex? They wanted the pleasure, but didn't want the responsibility to take care of the kids. You ever been picked last on a team, you know, in school? I was always last. Nobody ever picked me with going. <laughs> I didn't know if I stunk or what, but I didn't know nobody would have picked me. <laughs> but was you ever last or first? If you, if you was fast, he picked you first, didn't he? Last on the playground, the coach would say, maybe somebody else will pick him up. <laughs> somebody else will pick him up. I won't have to. Well, they say, I, I had him the last time. That's somebody else did. And uh, so when they pick you, where do they put you at in baseball when you're not very good? What position do they put you in? Right field. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know there was a left field when I played. Right. They put you in right field while the coach said, Don't swing. <laughs> Have you ever told you that? Don't swing. Maybe they'll walk you. What a kid did. <laughs> we need base runners. <laughs> Don't swing at the ball. They just stand there and look like a man. Bless the Lord. Yeah. A suicide note from a teenage girl that this pastor found. It says, Dear Mom, I'm sorry that I was ever born. It seems to me that I've ruined your happiness. So I chose this way out so you can be happy again. Chances are this little girl was probably loved and wanted, but somehow the parents failed to communicate with them. We need to let our children know that we love them unconditionally. Amen. Just like God loves us. Amen. He don't keep us away every time we sin. We live in an achievement society where if the children don't have the ability to do something, my kid ain't no good. He's a failure. How's that child feel when the parent tells them that, that they're failure? Parents, do you kids know that there's nothing they can do to be more loved because they're already loved with measureless love? Nothing they can do to be more accepted. 
Ms. Rosie, I appreciate you so much bringing those little kids to church. Amen. 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 Bringing them right to you. Teach kids a, a gift from God. Nothing will alienate a child more than making them work for something that should be given free. Love, acceptance, and self-worth. If you raise your child on unconditional love, so many times they say, well, I gotta do that extra thing this time so my, my parents will love me. You know, all the Lord wants is our best. Amen. Man. It doesn't matter if man approves it or not. Sometimes we work, 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 work. For some time, we, we never spend any time with the kids at all. And the kids don't even try. But aren't we supposed to motivate our child? Amen? Amen. Aren't we supposed to encourage them? Don't we want them to reach their full potential? Motivate on the basis of what their best is. Did you know you can be proud of your child even if you're displeased with them? You can show them love, acceptance. Amen. Even when you're discussing with their attitude, just like the Lord against us, he discussed their attitude. Yes, Amen. Right. I'm convinced that some people who claim to be demotivating their child for the child's sakes are doing it because of their own sake. We lived in Marion and coached a little girl softball team. And his coach that was helping you know what I'm talking about that. His daughter, he got on her all the time. And she would cry going to bed because she knew that she wasn't going to do it good enough to please her daddy. I told him one day, I said, are you playing or is she playing? Mm -hmm. They said, well, I'm going to do that so I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. Ask yourself, do my children know that they are a blessing? Not a burden. They know they're loved unconditionally. Amen. That's commitment. Commitment to your kids and commitment to God. Flows right down the channels. In a survey, 1,500 kids were asked what makes families happy. Now listen to this thing. Ninety percent of them gave the same answer. It wasn't a big house, new video games, or lots of money. <clears throat> it was doing things together. Man. <clears throat> doing things together. You may think, preacher, are we talking about quality time or quantity time? Could be both. Time together is how you get to know each other in a deep, deep way. Our daughter, I know our team, and you know, we don't know her name, man. She goes, Angie, why don't y'all do this? I'd always single her out. I still the whole thing. Finally, she said, Daddy, I'm not the only one playing. <laughs> We're not spending enough time together. Children want love. Man, you can. I love you to your kids all you want to, but they still want you to do have action. Do things with them. Marriage is like a two horses you're pulling a wagon. One going one way and they go work. Families need to say to our kids, you're a priority, and I love you. Amen. I love you. Spend some time with them. Shoot the basketball, take them fishing, take a this, let them run an errand with you. And make sure you bring them to church. Amen. Amen. Your neighbors should have to bring your kids to church. Amen. Kids home to 